Manchester United run away 3-0 winners against Crystal Palace in the League Cup. It was a game that saw massive rotation from Ten Hag. It saw the youth coming through. It saw Amrabat make his debut. It saw Casemiro with another goal. We learned plenty from that game. I'm going to tell you the five main things that we learned from that game that we can take going forward into Palace at the weekend, into Galatasaray next week, and to Brentford the week after. This has to be the beginning of United's season. Start with Burnley. Built on it against Palace. Now we do it again this weekend. Let me know what you think in the comments, what you feel we learned from that game. But first up for me, that there is an Eric Ten Hag team. I remember last season, and I, I always will look back on this game as a, as a game where the blueprint was kind of set. Spurs at home. I remember, you might remember it. It's where Fred scored. United won 2-0, but we really aggressively pressed on the front foot. We were proactive. Old Trafford bounced massively. That game there, sure, Palace rotated. So did United. Seven changes. Yet, we were collectively as a team. From defence, midfield, attack, as a unit. Every single man did their job. Every single player did their job. And Ten Hag was delighted with it at full time. He's like, Meh. we have control of possession. It was control was the big buzzword yesterday. And that is something that Ten Hag is really going to take a lot of positives from. And I think you should too. Because I don't remember a game where everybody collectively played as well as they did yesterday. For a long time. You can let me know in the comments the last time that happened. We've been like sort of isolating individual performances. But that there, Ten Hag can go. Every single player from Maguire, Anana, the whole way through to Mason Mount, Hannibal, Martial, Pellistri, Garnaccio, everybody. They performed. And that is a Ten Hag team. You're talking about Ten Hag's identity. You saw it there. Now, we've got to deliver against Crystal Palace in the Premier League, but at least the team have showed there, even after a couple of weeks ago when it was so negative, they are playing for the manager. It's right there. We just need to see more of it. And a player who was so crucial to making that performance possible was, of course, Sofian Amrabat. For me, he is the game changer. He is the key to unlocking this Ten Hag team. Look, truth be told, if Eric Ten Hag got what he wanted, Casemiro wouldn't be a Manchester United player. Frankie de Jong would be. And we would have had an Amrabat type player from the first game of last season. We've been missing that player the whole way through. The first phase midfielder. It might be boring, but you saw the benefits of it yesterday. And he was doing it from a left back position. It was a fantastic debut from Amrabat. 92 touches, was it 96% passing accuracy? He found his teammates. He constantly kept the ball moving and he constantly made himself an available option. I'm going to run through a full analysis of, of Amrabat's full debut a little bit later. You're going to get treated two videos today. I say I don't treat you sometimes. But here you can see Varane on the ball. You can see Casemiro there. What does Amrabat do? He realizes he needs to be an option and he drops deep and he gives United another option. It was a very like, there's so many more examples and maybe better examples that I have got compared to that. But Amrabat was the difference maker. Amrabat brought the balance. Amrabat brought the control. United shouldn't be chasing the ball around for 90 minutes. We had 25% possession against Burnley because all we needed to do in that game was win. By any means necessary, depend on your defence and, and we won. Second clean sheet in a row, by the way. That's a big day. That's a big change. But Ten Hag was delighted with him. and He said, look, that's why we play him. That's why we play him there. I don't know he's capable in terms of him playing left back. I said before, he is a player. If the team needs him, he'll play there. And he gives his contribution to the team and that quality, but also qualities and also the energy and dynamism or the dynamic he brings. And I'll tell you what the dynamic that he brought. And it kind of leads me into my next point. But Amrabat is the man who's going to bring genuine balance to our midfield where we've lacked it for so long. And I'll tell you, the probably the player that's going to benefit the most from that. Now, there's a few players. I think Onana will definitely benefit significant Amrabat will probably benefit the most in terms of having that player who will always make himself available for the pass out from the back but Casemiro and it feels like we're kind of watching a little bit of an evolution of Casemiro last season he took his time to come into the team took his time but then when he broke into the team and he was there for the rest of it and he was a fantastic midfielder throughout the whole season it feels and the reason I'm saying an evolution of Casemiro is this he was known as the piano carrier at Real Madrid, wasn't he? He had Cruz, he had Modric. All he needed, I say all he needed to do, it's a very difficult thing to do, but he dominated that screening position in front of his back four, protecting, winning the ball back and feeding two of the best creators 
in midfield, in world football, in Cruz and Modric. At Manchester United, it feels now that if he's got Amrabat behind him, that Casemiro can be that sort of all-purpose box-to-box midfielder. He's got 18 goal contributions for United since he joined, which is ridiculous, in like less than 60 appearances. And he's a defensive midfielder on paper. And I don't think he wants to be that defensive midfielder anymore. And I think that's kind of half the reason it didn't work at the start of the season with Ten Hag using Bruno and Mount as the aggressive two number eights because Casemiro wants to be aggressive. Unfortunately, he hasn't got the athleticism to cover himself. If he makes those mistakes, that's why you negate it. I think Casemiro can be one of the world's best as a proper box-to-box midfielder. You know, running around, lunging in where he can. And he knows full well that if he doesn't make that tackle, he's got Amrabat in behind him. That's a key thing that we learned from that game against Paris. That Casemiro in that role can thrive. And if he's got the safety net of Amrabat behind him, he doesn't really have to worry too much about what is going on behind him. That will make a big difference to Casemiro this season. So hopefully this is the start. Let's be honest, Casemiro has been really poor this season so far. I think Amrabat is a player who comes in and enables Casemiro to be as good as he was there against Crystal Palace. Something that we definitely haven't seen enough from Ten Hag is rotation. And we saw it against Crystal Palace. Seven changes and he has now shown that he is willing to trust this team to deliver. You saw look, Mason Mount coming in, who I thought had a pretty good 45 minutes, by the way. Um, kind of got overshadowed by Amrabat and other performances like Casemiro, but Mason Mount did well. Mason Mount coming back in. Pellistri starting. Garnacho starting. Martial starting. Maguire starting. Martial getting a goal. Maguire played pretty well at centre-back. It's, it's what happens when United are more comfortable on the ball. This is what Ten Hag has been needing. I think he's been... Last season, it felt like he didn't trust his second eleven. I don't think he completely trusts them now, but I think he can certainly trust them more. And the fact that, that we made seven changes and we started Garnacho, we started Mount, we started Casemiro, we started Amrabat, we started Varane, we started Onana, it goes to show you that the squad is improving quality-wise. More is still needed, absolutely. But the fact that these players, who are fringe players, some of them, delivered, yes, it was against a much-changed Crystal Palace side than the League Cup, but yes, it was a much-changed Manchester United side as well. They delivered. And that is a key thing. Ten Hag can trust this squad a little bit more this season, which I don't think he was able to do last season. And that will hopefully will make a big difference to United across the course of the entire season. Because, look, if we're going to be competing in the Champions League and the Premier League and the League Cup, maybe in the, in the FA Cup, we're going to have to rotate. So it was good to see those performances overall. And for me, the last thing I want to speak about from that game is, is the youth. Because it really feels like the youth for Ten Hag are stepping up. And it's not just a case of youth for the sake of it, which was a bit Louis van Gaal, right? So many injuries, throwing in Tyler Blackett, Paddy McNair, Donald Love, Cameron Borthwick Jackson, sod knows who else. Just tons and tons of debuts of players that then ended up leaving within 6 to 12 months. Hannibal, perfect example of what's happened in these last couple of games. Absolutely embodying this Ten Hag philosophy and identity. The sort of running to the very last minute. It's not just running to the very last minute. And that's something that we did there against Paddis. Because we controlled it so much, we had the energy in our legs to keep running until the last minute. If you're running full tilt for the whole game, you will expire. That's what happens in football. Dan Gore came off the bench and he came on for 30 minutes. It wasn't just a little five-minute cameo for no reason. And look at that. 93% pass accuracy. 33 touches on the ball. Dan Gore got involved. And he didn't really put a foot wrong. Garnacho, he scored. Pellistri, I think, impressed, but the final product wasn't there. Hannibal doing a job there. Dan Gore doing a job there as well. Ten Hag has made it clear that he's not just going to play the, the youth for the sake of playing the youth. He is going to play the youth when they deserve their opportunity. So that's something that the young players have learned. Chances will come there. If you're good enough for Manchester United in training, he will play you. He's just switched the policy. We've sold the likes of Emeron and Iqbal and Laird and players that Ten Hag didn't think were good enough, but Mainu, Hannibal, now Dan Gore, Garnacho there, Pellistri coming through. There is opportunities for youth players at United and they just have to take them. But for me, they're the main sort of five takeaways from that game. You can let me know what you think in the comments below. It's just nice to be really overwhelmingly positive about a game of football. And it's about the, the, the building blocks, the, the ladder that we're on. We were down in the dumps after Bayern Munich. Burnley, climbing it up a little bit. Palace, 
climbing up, climbing up that ladder a little bit more. Now we've got Palace again in the Premier League. Repeat that performance in the Premier League, and that's the next step up. And I think Amrabat's going to be key. The evolution of Casemiro, the youth putting through. That was a Ten Hag team. You let me know what you think in the comments below.